Quilters Newsletter TV, the Quilters Community, is brought to you by Handy Quilter, designed by a quilter for quilters, and Husqvarna Viking, keeping the world sewing for over 140 years. Hi, welcome to Quilters Newsletter TV, the Quilters Community. I'm Mary Kate Carpetris, and I'm here today with Valerie Euland. Valerie, hi. Hi. Valerie is a senior editor with McCall's Quilting, and McCall's and Quilters Newsletter are sister publications. We're all here together in the same building, and in fact, um, sometimes just separated by cubicle walls, <laughs> as I think is the case with our cubicles. Actually, no, you've moved into an office now, so that's not the case. You're far away now, but um, Valerie is here today to talk about this quilt that we see hanging behind us, um, and we're just going to talk about this quilt in the context of every quilt has a story, even something that's sort of simple or sort of, you know, not generic, but you know, it's a one block thing, traditional, kind of yes, but there's a, mm -hmm. quite a story behind this. So why don't you tell us about the impetus for making this quilt? What was your inspiration? Sure. Um, 2013 was our 20th anniversary of McCall's Quilting Magazine. And we have a tradition that on our back page of each issue, we offer a free vintage quilt pattern that can be downloaded at our website. For our 20th birthday year, we decided that um, we would go back in time and revisit some of our past issues and choose one of our favorites to remake in a more modern fabric or design kind of idea. So I chose a quilt from August 96 issue, and it was a cover quilt designed by Lynn Dash using the classic mill wheel block. Mm -hmm. And I really liked that pattern because I'm always drawn to curved piecing because I find it challenging. And, right. and so it's fun, and I'm usually happy with the results with the, the curved piecing. Did you follow that pattern exactly? Did you modify it at all for making this version? Her original pattern was in very classic blue and white and just those two fabrics. So I had a uh, one of those inviting little five inch charm packs of really cute, up to date, trendy Christmas fabrics. Mm -hmm. Um, a little non-traditional, and I thought that would be fun to plug in. So I ended up using the charm packs as the uh, as kind of my guide for the color scheme. And then I just um, picked up some of my favorite colors and decided to kind of get a, an angular motion going on and yeah. kind of change it up a little and made it much more scrappy than, than her version was. Yeah. Do you work on a design wall? I mean, how did you come up with this color placement? Well, I do have a design wall. But in this case, I had a lot of fun working with EQ or okay. Electric Quilt yeah. 7. And um, I just played and played. And I usually end up with about 20 designs. And, uh -huh. and I know that my favorite is whatever is the last design I'm, I'm looking at. It's like, oh, okay, now I got you it. You just keep refining exactly, and refining. Exactly, exactly. It's just a process of playing. So just play with it for a few hours. And yeah, yeah. About. And then when I when I finally get to a design I like, then then I say, okay, there it is. And, and you know, it's just kind, kind of something you know when you finally arrive there, you you, and you feel like, oh, okay, yeah, that's that's good. I like that look. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And how long did you have to make it? Because <laughs> we're always well, working on deadlines. We are. We know that. Um, I probably ended up having about a month to make it. Okay. Yeah. But again, you said you like curved piecing. Yes. Some people would applique those on mm -hmm. it, but those are traditionally pieced in? Yes, they are. I had fun doing that. Do you, Have yeah. you made a lot of curved piecing? Do you drunkard's path or um, you know, other types of... Not, not a lot, not a lot, but they all appeal to me and they're all on my to-do list. <laughs> right. You know, and, and that type of a curve, it's it's a little um, it's a little smaller of a curve than maybe mm -hmm. you'd get with a drunkard's path block, mm -hmm. but it's it's not that bad. No, I mean, no. people shouldn't be afraid of it's fun. curve yeah. piecing and the, the, the feed dogs kind of help you along. Yeah. You know, just yeah. need a little coaxing, perhaps. Yep. Pinning. Yep. Pinning is your friend. <laughs> it's kind of relaxing to me because I actually end up having to concentrate. So it, it keeps me from thinking about other other things that might be on my mind. Interesting, just sort of yeah. focusing on the task. Exactly. Hand. Mindfulness. It's right. a Zen quilt. Right. <laughs> you come right down to it. Um, so about a month. Great. Okay. And and then you do your own quilting. Your own yes. machine quilting. Yes, I do. How do you design how do you decide on your designs for your quilting? 
Well, to me, one of the most important things was that I would have a continuous design. Um, I don't tend to prefer all over quilting. I tend to prefer custom quilting, but I really don't want to have to start and stop a lot because I don't like burying the ends. Yeah. <laughs> so, so it really had to do with that. And I, I just took a, uh, a pencil and a sketch pad and just kind of um, I had I had a printout from EQ and I put it under a sheet of tracing paper and then I played with my quilting designs and peel off a sheet of tracing paper, play with another design until I ended up with something that I was happy with. So you said you had a printout from EQ and that's of the quilting motif? Um, no, a printout from EQ was the um, color picture of okay. my quilt. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. And then you draw freehand? Yes, oh, okay. on the tracing paper over the color printout just to try different ideas. And how... Yeah. I'm not great at drawing. <laughs> <laughs> Neither am I. <laughs> well, you must be better than you think you are, though, because that's really that's really lovely quilting. And you just, but Thank I guess you. it's just a matter of just the doing of it. Yeah. Right. You just sit down and you decide. Yep. yep. To do it, and so how just many different, doodling? How many different motifs do you do you have in this quilt? Well, I I began with um, small holly leaves inside the small circles. And then I surrounded those circles with kind of what made me think of a uh, old-fashioned uh, ribbon candy motif. And from there, I added a star motif into the center of each of the large solid areas. That's great. And then how do you, how do you get them? Because they look, that ribbon candy motif, for instance, going around the circles is, is really nice and even. Do you mark your quilt top? Do you pin? A template on top and sew through the paper. How do you do it? I, I used a uh, blue washout marker and I did extremely minimal marking. I don't really enjoy marking, so <laughs> I did things such as put a small dot in the center of each motif and then um, I did have a circle that I just laid down and put almost very vague dotted lines to just kind of keep me in the... Uh, in the right, you know, about an inch away from the center circle motif to keep myself in mm. in the, uh, give me a little bit of a guide as I quilted. How long have you been free motion quilting? Because that sounds like you really have a good control over your speed and you know where you're going and you're definitely not a novice at free motion, is that correct? Um, I, I have experience. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, um, I'll probably, I don't know, 10 to 15 years. Okay. Yeah. And before you sit down to quilt, do you practice, you, do you have a practice sandwich that you test out your motifs on first? Oh, yes. Okay. <laughs> yeah. It's always good to talk about because, yeah. again, if, yeah. if you're new to free motion or it scares you, maybe you think mm -hmm. the people who do it well just sit down and they just do it and there's, there's work involved and there's well, preparation involved. Yeah, and, that, and that's a, that brings up a good point. Um, as I was working on the curved piecing, I did end up with some blocks that weren't, I was not happy with and the, the little curved corner pieces didn't line up right. Well, I just tossed those few in a pile, and when I was ready to practice my quilting motifs, I just took one of those okay. bad blocks uh -huh. and tossed it on top of um, a scrap piece of batting and a scrap piece of backing and just went to town trying some ideas on mm -hmm. it. And then this has been washed, which <laughs> we like, and um, you, but you made it for 2013, mm -hmm. and have you used it at all yet, or are you looking forward to using it this holiday season for um, the first time? I, I didn't... I didn't really end up using it much in 2013, and um, I, I just, uh, I look forward to pulling it out of the cabinet this Christmas. Yeah, it's really mm -hmm. lovely, and um, the, the color placement, you know, when, when you're up close on it, you don't really see, perhaps, the, the diagonal color placement, mm -hmm. but then you get back, and it gives you something more to look at. Um, so it's just a testament to the power of playing around with the tools available to you mm -hmm. and, and trying something different. Yeah, so. I had a lot of fun. It, it, it's a very basic pattern, but it, it turned out very playful because of all the different colors. I, I enjoyed it. Yeah. What's the name of it? Uh, what's your name for it? Um, you know, I don't think I came up with a name oh. for it. I didn't need to because we just called it Mill Will. Okay, <laughs> so. well, that'll be your task for this Christmas okay. season is to give it its own special little name. I'll have to do that. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming in and taking some time out of your day to share this quilt with us today, Valerie. Thank you for having me. It was really nice. Thank you for joining us. We look forward to seeing you next time. Bye-bye. Quilters Newsletter TV, the quilters community, is brought to you by Handy Quilter, designed by a quilter for quilters, and Husqvarna Viking, keeping the world sewing for over 140 years.